Hello, Dark Reader, and welcome to the Dark Side of the Library podcast. I'm your host, Katie, and I am going to be reviewing The Only One Left by Riley Sager. I apologize. I missed last week. We had a family emergency. And then in addition to that, the reason why you're not seeing my face yet again is because I am sick. Of course I am. Every time I'm around kids, I swear I just I immediately get sick. So I should just anticipate that. Wear a mask every time. Anyway, so I wanted to review this book. I felt really bad that I missed last week. And lots of people have been talking about this book as like a big summer read. It's definitely on a lot of people's top five books of 2023. And I didn't want to miss the train on this. So let's talk about Riley Sager super fast. So I've this is my first Riley Sager book I've actually read. But he's very well known for his uh, first novel, The Final Girls. And one of the books that I'm familiar with, at least the cover, is The House Across the Lake, and there's also Survive the Night. He definitely writes more, like, mystery thrillers. The only one left sounds like a paranormal book. It's not. But it's definitely more gothic, atmospheric. We definitely had to pick that one up. Plus, I mean, like, look at the cover. There's a mansion on the edge of a cliff. I mean, it's just very Poe-esque. It's perfect. Let me talk about the summary first, and then I'll get into my thoughts. So first, I have to talk about the reason why I got hooked, and I had to read this book initially. There's this little poem here that breaks down the summary, but I'm going to say the whole thing. It is, at 17, Lenora Hope hung her sister with a rope, stabbed her father with a knife, took her mother's happy life. It wasn't me, Lenora said, but she's the only one not dead. Clearly, this has been reduced down to the schoolyard chant, and I was like, man, this sounds dark and great. A trigger warning here. Uh, This book does deal with some dark themes, drug use, uh, manslaughter. There clearly is murder in here. Um, It's definitely abuse, sexual abuse, trauma, that sort of thing. So just be forewarned, we're going to be going through some of those themes a little bit. And I just want to cover my bases here. Here's what this book is about. Clearly, we have this character named Lenora Hope. It's set in 1929, so early, which I actually kept forgetting that this book is not contemporary at all. Lenora was 17 years old, and people assume that she was responsible for killing her entire family in this giant mansion. She was very well off. And the thing was, is the the police were never able to prove that she was guilty, So she's never actually spoken publicly about these killings, and she's kind of holed herself up in her old home ever since this massacre. Nobody's really seen Lenora Hope. She's kind of like that boogeyman, Bloody Mary, or, you know, she's just that kind of character now in this town. Now we fast forward to 1983, and again, I totally forgot this was the 80s. (laughs) I thought that everything was right now. Anyway, so our main protagonist is named Kit McDeer, and she is a home health aide. She is now being assigned to take care of Lenora Hope at Hope's End. This was because uh, the previous nurse just kind of fled in the middle of the night and totally disappeared. Not only that, Kit has been unemployed for like six months because this isn't a spoiler. This is in the very beginning. But her mom actually died recently, and that's because people assume that Kit was the person who did it. Kit's mom was suffering from cancer, and Kit was actually assigned to be the home aide for her own mom. And what happened was that she left some fentanyl pills on the side of the bed you know, on the side of the bed. Her mom was convincing her like, hey, I won't do anything. It's fine, whatever. And Kit was like, oh, I shouldn't do that because it's illegal. But she does. She trusts her mom. Next day, her mom is dead, supposedly of a overdose. Ever since then, you know, a lot of people have been like, Kit McDear is clearly, you know, this was manslaughter. She clearly killed her mom. Nobody was able to totally prove that she did that but it affected her work because she was working in some sort of big conglomerate she was on a leave of absence finally out of desperation she goes back reaches out to her boss and is like hey do you have any jobs for me because she's 
just at her wit's end at this point. And so out of spite, actually, because she kind of ruins the reputation of the place she was working at. So he was like, well, you can work with Lenora Hope, who also has a similar problem where she was not necessarily proven guilty, but everybody thinks that she killed her whole family. Anyway, that was a little sidebar there. But that just sets the stage for this whole thing. So she is taking care of Lenora. She's confined to a wheelchair. She was rendered mute by a series of strokes. And she only communicates with Kit by tapping out sentences on an old typewriter. And also just by tapping on a chair, yes or no, she'll just do one or two. So Lenora one day tells Kit that she wants to tell her everything. Kit begins to help Lenora write about the events that led to the Hope family massacre. And then it becomes more and more clear that there's way more to the tale than people don't actually know about. And when new details about her predecessor's departure come to light, Kit actually starts to suspect that Lenora might not be telling her 100% of the truth. And this woman that might seem harmless might actually be more dangerous than she first thought. So that is the basis of The Only One Left. Let me get into my thoughts on this book. I'm going to do my best not to spoil anything. So up front, I gave this book about a three out of five. And I think I'm actually being kind of generous. The more I sit with it, the more I'm like, uh, you know, like it's okay. If you're really into murder, thriller, mystery books this is definitely more your al- up your alley and I'm not saying I'm not I do enjoy them but I feel like it needs to be executed really really well and I feel like this one just turn I feel like this one has too many tropes I think it just has so many twists and turns that it's just it's over the top the first thing I want to mention is that this book f- is fast paced I felt like there was there wasn't a time that I felt just bored I wasn't drifting off because I was dealing with a family emergency and because I've been sick. I've actually only been able to sit with this book for a few minutes at a time. And every time I'd go back to it, I knew exactly where I was. So I felt like the pacing was pretty, pretty great, actually. Usually that's a big problem for me. I have ADHD, so I'm always drifting off. Not with this one. So that was definitely a pro for me. The other thing, too, I this book is divided into two different perspectives. We have Kit's perspective, and then we have Lenora's perspective. I actually didn't mind them. I felt like their voices were very, very different. They had very different ways of thinking about things. Kit is definitely somebody who's down and out. She's just trying to get a paycheck. She's just trying to live a little bit. She's never actually been a part of a lavish lifestyle like Lenora has. So when she enters this whole new workplace, you witness her just awe of how Lenora has lived. Like she's got maids, cooks, butlers, people who take care of her landscaping. Kit's never had any of that. So I liked just that sort of juxtaposition. In addition to that, Lenora seems to, it's almost like a, she was a prisoner in a gilded cage is kind of the message I'm getting. So even though they come from very different backgrounds, they both felt some essence of being alone and unhappy and wanting to escape the lives that they had, but in different places. So I liked both of those. The characters themselves, I don't think I actually related to very much and I didn't really like anybody, but I liked reading about Kit And I liked reading about Lenora and both of their past. I thought they were very interesting. The beginning was very strong. It was a lot easier for me to overlook some of these weird things that were mentioned. Like, for instance, Kit sleeping with her neighbor. I'm not really sure what the whole purpose of that whole thing was, but I guess it was to define Kit and where she's at mentally. It just felt kind of, uh, whatever. But because the beginning started out so strong, it was things like that where ordinarily if the book was just kind of like, uh, I would not have overlooked it as much, but I did. And another thing I really enjoyed, this might be the biggest thing, was the atmosphere. So I did feel like this book was very gothic. So the way that Riley Sager describes Hope's End We have Kit getting this big tour of Hope's End and just a brief history. It does feel very gothic and the atmosphere too. We have like some things that might come off as paranormal. Things that 
you and I probably have experienced before, like, oh, we're hearing weird noises out in the living room, you know, those kinds of things. And I feel like he's really brought some of the that anticipation and, you know, that anxiety to this book that feels very grounded. When describing the house itself and hopes and just the fears that we as people have or develop over time about certain places, especially some place that is considered to be like this, you know, a huge massacre happened here. So we have Kit going through this whole house and she's like, oh, my God, that's where the sister was hung by a rope. And did Lenora do that? So there's a lot of this stuff going on that I really enjoyed. And I think just the atmosphere itself, it was very well done. Now to the things that I didn't like. And these ones, I think, after sitting with this book for a bit, have started to overwhelm some of the good stuff. It got a little nutty at the end and I think it just kind of took away from some of the beautiful parts that were in the very beginning. The biggest and most notable thing that really started to irk me and I started to notice this more and more as we started getting to the end, it felt like we were in a fishbowl. So the hopes and massacre in some way seemed like this national sensation or at least like a northeast coastal big boogeyman kind of story everybody knew about it it was on a it's a schoolyard chant for Christ's sake right like lots of people have talked about this thing but it feels like such a small town so everything got a little too coincidental Usually I can overlook things like, okay, all these characters are drawn here for the same reason and that's why they're all interconnected because they have things that they're drawn to, but there were literal distance issues. So sometimes it felt like Kit, her father's house, would be down the street. It felt like it was really not that far away or other things like the library or just some random person there retirement home or whatever it is uh why are all these people literally in the same area even after years of not really intermingling with any of these characters it's not hours away they're they're minutes away it just feels like everybody is stuck in this little tiny place in a very small scope and it got really obvious and a little it was claustrophobic i was like why are all these people right here And it felt like very small town, but also it wasn't supposed to be. So in a way, it was a little jarring because even at the end, it was talking about, oh, people now know about the hopes and massacre. And it's a national story. All these things were right here, which kind of leads me to this whole issue that I had with the police force in here. They seem incredibly incompetent. There's so many problems with just generally about the case that is like, Oh, yeah, we looked at it and we just are assuming that the 17 year old girl was able to hang her own sister, who's older, uh, off this banister, kill her father and her mother all in a night. (laughs) But not only that, the nurse that goes missing. uh, Sorry, this is a a spoiler, so please pause or fast forward a little bit. Um, anyway, so the cop pulls out, like, the suicide note, and he just has it hanging out in his pocket the whole time. It's like, well, that's what she said, so it must be it. It just feels so kind of sloppy. Anyway, so I had some issues with the, like, the investigative portion of it, but okay, fine. Katie, it's a thriller. It's a mystery. Leave it alone. Of all of the issues that I had with this book, the twists, I mean, and I mean, like, multiple twists, were so ludicrous that it watered down this novel if they just stuck with one thing instead of giving everybody a scooby-doo monster mask this would have been a way better novel even like two twists sometimes less is more i learned that from cooking shows and it's true sometimes less is more in this case riley sager went ham i think almost to a point where it's actually like trolling me. I was like, come on, you've got to be kidding me. So it got a little crazy. Honestly, even after a couple of like couple of big, big twists that we got, I was like, fine. But at the very, very end, and once you read this novel, you might know what I'm talking about. The very, very end with Kit and Lenora, I was so upset. It got silly 
er, it was already silly, but it got way worse. I was just shocked. And there's a lot of plot holes going on with all of these twists and turns. It feels like 50% of the novel towards the end, it relies upon just these twists and turns rather than that creepy atmospheric gothic feel that we got this whole time. That anxiety that Kit was feeling staying in this house. You know, she might be taking care of a freaking killer like a psycho killer but instead it turns into this weird kit trying to investigate and trying to be her own detective and she learns about x y and z and then this person's a liar and this person's a liar and this person's a liar it just gets a little it's convoluted and it's it's silly it makes me sad because i feel like it started off so strong again i I think i am being really generous with my three out of five just for the books that i personally enjoy but i think if you do enjoy like murder mystery stuff twists and turns all over the place This might be the novel for you, and that is absolutely okay. And I might have missed the mark. I saw somebody review this book and said that it was kind of a paranormal book, and there was nothing paranormal in this book, so I was really confused. Um, So I might have honestly missed something. And again, family emergency sickness. So if you do think I might be wrong, which is entirely possible, if you do have any thoughts about this novel, make sure to give us a comment. On your favorite listening app over on YouTube, we've been doing our podcast episodes over there. You will probably see my face in the books. I did read the book itself. So make sure to give us a comment. Let us know what you think. And to join us on our other socials at Dark Side of the Library on Instagram, Facebook, and of course YouTube. Or you can just download any sort of podcast app out there and we'll be on there. Make sure to spread the word to your friends and family, your loved ones, anybody who likes spooky stuff. Plus, spooky season is coming up. If you want spooky reads, we do like to curate books every single month for you. Any kind of horror, thriller, that sort of thing at darksideofthelibrary.com. And on Fridays, I tend to do little mini-sodes of books that I've read lately. So please let other people know about Dark Side of the Library. We appreciate y'all so much. Thank you for listening to my ravings and rantings and ramblings. Uh, We will see you next time. Have a creeptastic rest of your week.